This is Texas Rangers announcer Eric Nadell, and you're listening to the Ranger Report podcast, as you should be. This is the Ranger Report podcast. News, insights, predictions, interviews, and information about the Texas Rangers from the major leagues to the minor leagues. And now, here are your hosts, Ben Dieter and C.J. Berryman. Experience the joy of watching your friends and family's faces light up when you feed them wild game you harvested and made them delicious sausages or meat you barbecue and grill with the finest seasonings available. Visit our friends at Waltons.com to find everything you need to turn wild game into tasty meat snacks or spice up your barbecue with new flavors and seasonings. With over 500 seasonings to choose from, there's something that everyone will love. They even have step-by-step videos and how-to articles at Beatistics to help you go from animal to edible. Use coupon RANGERS15 at checkout to save 15% on your first order at Waltons.com. Waltons, everything but the meat. No offense, CJ, you look like a possum on chemo. All right, everyone, welcome to the Ranger Report podcast. We are excited today to be joined by Texas Rangers prospect Ricky Vanasco. Ricky, how are you today, sir? I'm good, guys. Doing well. Good. Well, first thing I want to ask you, I I went back and listened to your interview with the Texas Rangers baseball podcast. Do they still have you eating 6,200 calories a day? Uh, No, I'm, you know, (laughs) I've been, I've laid off of uh, my Chipotle recently, (laughs) so, um, they don't want me to gain any more weight. So I'm just kind of doing my own thing and maintaining it at this point. So it's been really good. Man, if it was me and they told me to eat that many calories, I'd be jumping around like Richard Simmons. <laughs> it was, I'll tell you what, man, it was, it was tough. It was a tough point in rehab. All right. <laughs> we'll move on from that. Um, you're one of the, uh, you know, top prospects in baseball, uh, number 12 in, in the Rangers system. And, you know, you've dealt with a lot of injury and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's it's kind of been a slow start to your career. But now here you are. And from what I've read, you were, you know, you, you entered hitting, you know, 89, 91, topping out of 92. Now you're hitting 95, 96 and topping out of 99. So talk, talk to us about how your arm feels. Um, I mean, lately, you know, after, you know, Tommy John going through that whole process, uh, you know, it was, it was a little tough at the beginning. Um, I still had like kind of a little bothersome when I was coming back, throwing in instructs and stuff like that. Um, but now, I mean, I, I got nothing. I mean, I feel good. I feels good through the off season and, you know, throwing program has been going really well. So it's been, it's been good. And how excited are you for preparing for a full spring training? It's it's, it's, it's been a while. Uh, I cannot wait, man. <laughs> I've been sitting here, you know, biting at the bit. That's why I came back to Arizona early, you know, hopefully um, everything can get settled. But other than that, like, I'm just, I'm ready to go, man. I'm so excited for this year. Uh, I got a lot of look, you know, a lot to look forward to, obviously with the position I'm in now. So it's going to be a good, exciting year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I know I had reached out to you right after you had the surgery and you said you were going to hold off till you're ready to go because we've been looking forward to seeing you for a while. And you pitched so well uh, in, uh, in when, the, when you pitched in October, I believe it was. You, you, had, you, you were a little amped up there at the beginning, but you, you pitched really well. So um, what are some of your goals going forward now for the 2022 season, seeing that you're actually going to get to get out there and throw live baseball on a regular basis this year? I mean, obviously, you know, the big thing for me is, you know, stay healthy. Uh, that's just main goal, you know, go out there with a clear mind, stay healthy and, you know, compete at the end of the day for me. Cause I, you know, I haven't got to do it in two years at this point. So, um, you know, my goal going into spring training is just go out there and, you know, have fun. I mean, my first big league spring training, hopefully, you know, it's going to be a blast as I expect it to be. So, um, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm going to try to make it, you know, as fun as I possibly can. Oh, it might be our first spring training as well. Uh, we might, we might see you there. <laughs> yeah. You guys want to come out and hang out? Yeah. That's what we're thinking. That's what we're thinking. But we got avenues. We got to, we got to <laughs> fill. Um, so how are all, are you, all are your different pitches feeling right now? I know you got fastball, curveball change. I mean, how are they feeling? Um, 
I've only, so just like the throwing program, uh, it's just like a slow build back for me. Um, right now it's a different throwing program than all the guys. So I've only been allowed to throw my fastball and my change up so far. Um, I think I started spinning, spinning, breaking balls in like two weeks or so, but I mean, fastball is just, you know, it's coming out like it should, um, it's spinning really well and then change up is, I mean, it's just, it's there. It's, you know, feels great coming out of the hand right now. And it's got a little bit more movement than it did before and a little bit more action to it. So I'm excited, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. Like I said, now, I did mention it, and I wanted to ask you about it. You do get to pitch back in October in a game in Texas. How, I mean, what, what, uh, how exciting was that? What did it feel like to actually get on a mound in front of fans and pitch to actual batters who were swinging at it? Get in front of fans. I bet that felt different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know, Texas Tech was, or um, TCU was obviously beautiful. Um, and it was good to get out there and, you know, be in front of those fans again. Um, first thing, you know, I was, I was a little nervous. I got a little, got myself a little too amped up and uh, I talked to my pitching coach after uh, evidently set an expectation that, you know, was unreachable um, just because I'm, I'm, that's the kind of picture I, pitcher I am. And so competitor. That, you're competitive. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I set that expectation a little too high, you know, coming in, you know, fresh out of, you know, Tommy John and rehab. So um, I should have just went out there with the mentality, you know, be free and you're healthy again and just go pitch. Um, and that's what I did the second inning. I mean, obviously you guys saw that. So, which was good. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I enjoyed pitching in front of fans. I enjoy being out there. You know, I love this thing every day. That's why I do it, you know? Yeah. And I've, I've heard you guys talk about it and I've heard you talk about it before in other places, but you know, as far as, as rehabbing, when you did, it was kind of a blessing because you kind of missed the whole fanless time of baseball because you were rehabbing from Tommy John surgery. I actually, I mean, I was at the alt site during the fanless time of baseball, but yeah, I evidently got hurt then too. And then <laughs> rehab through instructs and then missed all that, you know, last year or so. But I mean, like I said, you know, looking back now, I wouldn't have changed a thing. Like I would went through rehab 10 times over if, you know, I, I knew the end result was going to be, you know, what I am today and mm -hmm. the pitcher I am. So. Yeah. And you, you've had to work pretty hard to, continue on the program that you're on right now and, and continue on the tra trajectory there. I can say that I can say that word, <laughs> I guess trajectory um, that you're on. And uh, there's a lot of guys that have, and in, in, in the past just said, you know what, I, that's enough. I'm, I'm not doing this, but you're not that you're a competitor. Like I said, a minute ago, you're a competitor and you're not going to let, you're not going to let anything but the game tell you you're done. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to, and that when that day comes, man, I'm gonna let the game decide for me. But right now, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight for that spot, and you know, I'm gonna go pitch, man. I'm gonna go have fun. So it's a kid's game, you know. I'm just just an older man playing it at this point. So, which it's a blessing every day. So, so do you have any traditions that you have, you know, leading up to any each start? You know, like Dan Marley back when he played for the Miami Heat would turn a sock inside out, you know. Uh, I think it was his left foot. Uh, do you have anything, any, you know, pitchers, uh, y'all can be some very superstitious people. So yeah, do you I, have it. I, the, you know, I'll drink a, a Red Bull. I have to drink a Red Bull before the game. Uh, it's like 45 minutes before the game or something. Um, and then, uh, you know, putting on my uniform, I gotta, I have to, uh, I button up my uniform all the way and I'll leave the two on buttons until I get to the field and then I'll button it's military that, style. That I appreciate one. that, man. I'm, I'm ex air force man. I served in the air force for six years. But I appreciate that right there. Yeah. You button yeah, all those but buttons, buddy. I got, I got to button them up. You know, I got to make sure there's no wrinkles in the pants or nothing like that. So no, I, I got a couple of them, you know, I, I get going, but the rebel one's a big thing for me. If I don't have a rebel, it's going to be a bad day. <laughs> Well, yeah, trust when you get, when you get to be, when you get to be my age, you know, get just getting up in the morning is a routine, just being able to roll out of bed and get, get, get I feel moving. like I tear my ACL every morning. So yeah, trust me, I'm starting to, you know, I'm starting to feel it from all the weight lifting. Oh, oh, like that, once, like that. once you hit 30, Ricky, it's, it's going to start hitting you. Well, you know, ba baseball years is like dog years at this point. So I'm yeah. technically like 30 at this point. <laughs> all right. I'll take that. I'll take that. Well, yeah. you know, I get tired from delivering all the presents at Christmas. So uh, anyway, the, uh... <laughs> yeah, by the way, how impressive is Ben's beard? Look at that I mean, yeah, it's, I wish I could grow a beard. I wish I could grow facial hair, period. This is the best I can do right here. 
And I have yeah, to groom uh, it to make it look like this. Mine comes in so patchy, man. It's like I got like a little like a Joe down. Dirt. Oh, it's <laughs> like Joe oh, Dirt. it's terrible. Yeah, it's yeah. Bad. I have definitely been blessed with with facial hair. So uh, okay, all right. Let's ask you. The Rangers organization seems to be headed in the right direction. Obviously, from everything that's been going on, what do signings like Seager and Simeon and you know what they did, uh, the five hundred million dollars they spent earlier this year? What does that mean to guys like you who are going to be in Arlington soon? I mean, you know, it's. It's incredible. And they, I mean, they had a, a cr- incredible off season, you know, building our program more. And we know that, and they know that, that our younger guys are coming up and they, they need, you know, those leaders, those mentors up there in the big leagues for us to, you know, build around and build that, that John championship Gray. winning yeah. team around. For you specifically, John Gray. Yep. Absolutely. So, you know, they, they need those for us younger guys, you know, that don't, they don't really get it. And, you know, they, they build that, that program, that championship around them and it's going to be, it's going to be a really interesting season for us. And I think it's going to be nothing but, you know, beautiful. So I'm very excited for us. We certainly hope so here is, you know, we're just fanboys here running this podcast, but you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm an ex professional journalist and Ben's been running this podcast for since 2008. Yeah. Is that right, Ben? Yep. So no, it's not like uh, we, we don't know what's going on, but um, Talk about who did you admire growing up? So my, so I was born in New York, obviously. And my mom was a huge Alex Rodriguez fan. Ah. (laughs) So, you know, before though, all his steroids and stuff like that, you know, he was, I know I looked up to him, you know, I, I, for some reason wanted to be a position player and obviously that wasn't my calling. Um, but you know, I looked up to him, you know, the way he carried himself, um, just that swagger he had, you know, the, the way he portrayed himself on the field. And I don't know, there's, there's something about him, you know, it's just, he's got that competitive edge that, you know, obviously I have. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. We were, what about, what about a pitcher? What about um, a pitcher? You know, as of now, like going through my career, I really like Tyler glass now. Um, I have, I, I think like that's, that's my closest comp to, you know, who I am as a pitcher and is tall, lengthy, very over the top. Um, So I look up to him, you know, I watch a lot of his videos and, you know, I, I pick apart different mechanics that, you know, I think I could use for myself. Um, So it's, I really like him a lot. We were, we were talking to Jared Sandler from the Rangers radio network the other day. And he said, he thought Alex Rodriguez was probably the most talented person to ever wear a Rangers uniform. And CJ got mad about that too. So, but I mean, in his prime though, in his prime though, he really was amazing, but you know, Rangers fans yeah. have, have a grudge against him. We always say the best thing he did for the Rangers was strike out in game six of the 2010, uh, ALCS. Neftali Feliz curveball, bam, yep. <laughs> go yep. sit down. Yep. So you've been, you, you've been pitching since, since you were, you were young at any level, what is the weirdest or funniest thing that someone has said to you during a game? You know, I got a really good one, but I don't know if I can say it on the podcast. You can, cause yeah. this is our podcast. I'll tell you right yeah, it's, now. It's not um, radio. I'm you very, can say what you want. I'm very unfiltered and I don't give a shit. <laughs> so yeah, you can say it. So, um, I had a, I was in 15 U. And I played for, um, it was called the Naturals. And my coach, his name is Essex Sneed. He used to play for the Mets. Um, and I was on the mound. I was struggling. I was struggling. And he comes out to the mound and he's like, he's scary. Like he's a big guy. Um, he comes out to the mound and he looks me dead in my face and he goes, stop being a P word and throw the effing ball <laughs> and then walk like completely straight face and then walks away from me. And I like, I like looked at him for a second while he was walking away. And I was like, that's probably the best advice anybody's ever given me. <laughs> it sounds like uh Derek Holland when Ron Washington was, yeah, uh, they had them on the Texas Rangers baseball, baseball podcast. And Derek Holland said, yeah, Ron Washington went out there and was mother me. <laughs> yeah. Oh Yeah. <laughs> But I, you know, I was like, I was 15 years old and I like, I mean, I have never had a coach like say those words to me on the mountain. I was just like baffled for a second. I like stepped back off the mountain. I was like, wow. It set you, it, it reset your mind, didn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. I forgot completely <laughs> that I was pitching in a game. <laughs> All right. So I've been on your ass a little bit over the past, what, two weeks about Whataburger. You yeah. have not had it yet. No, I haven't. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a hint. 
Okay. So what, let's see, you're from New York. So what do you think about a patty melt? You, you got me baffled right now. I don't even know what that is. I was in, I, I moved out of New York when I was three years old. So right. I've, been in, I've been in Florida. Okay. So, all right, just, I'll give you a hint. Go, go with the double, double, double cheese, double meat and large fries and both spicy and okay. regular ketchup. I will. So I got a question for you because John told me to ask you, what's the Uh-oh. whole possum thing going on? Right? Oh, yeah, really? John? <laughs> he said, oh, nice, he said John. that uh, I, I was making a joke. We, we <laughs> Damn you, John. Um, we had... Uh, <laughs> We had Jeff and John on our podcast one night and I said, who has a better beard? And I thought it was just right. funny, you know, because everybody knows that Ben's got the better beard than I do. And uh, John told me I look like a key, uh, a possum on chemo. Wow. I'm so sorry. now, so now my, my, yeah, now all my best friends are like, we're just going to call you chemo possum from now on. Wow. Wow. John, John is, ke- well, John just keeps getting you with that CJ. I, I guess know, it was I, worth to ask at least. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was great. All right, so if we do wind up oh. going to spring training, which we plan on, Ricky, we'll, we'll get you a gift card to uh, Whataburger and make sure you try it while we're there. Hey, I'm all in, man. <laughs> oh, we'll, come, we'll, eat. We'll, we'll come eat with you. Hey, come on. We'll go out to lunch. That'll work. Oh, yes. That'll be great. All right, yeah. you got anything else, CJ? No, that's it. I got chemo possums here. So thanks to John. <laughs> John got Ricky to chemo possum you, man. That's, that's great. That's yeah. The best see, I thought, I thought I had, I thought I had John earlier when I <laughs> called him Mr. Moonface and then all kinds of stuff. And now he got it. you back. He got you he back. Got, he got me. He got me with Vanasco. Damn it. Well, Ricky, <laughs> Ricky, to be honest, we are really looking forward to seeing you pitch this year. Looking forward Absolutely. to seeing you get going. Hopefully you'll be in Frisco because I cover Frisco a lot. I go there a lot. So hopefully you'll be there at some point, if not starting there. And then hopefully you work your way up. But man, we are excited to see you throw this year, buddy. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys. You know, I just, everybody was looking out for me. And so I'm going to, it's going to be a big year. So I just hope everybody's watching because, you know, I'm coming. So thanks for listening to the Ranger Report podcast. Find us on Twitter. Facebook and at the rangerreport.com.